back in 1997, we've already got deep mind against a, a human being in a chess game. And now, almost 20 years later, we have another one, AlphaGo against human being. Can we reach the conclusion that artificial intelligence, since winning all of these games so far, are necessarily better or smarter than human being? Mr. Saito? Yeah, so artificial intelligence uh, has three levels, uh, artificial narrow intelligence, artificial general intelligence, and artificial superintelligence. It's actually at a very narrow level, uh, the computers are definitely beating uh, human beings in a very specific area. Uh, we're still a ways to go from a general human intelligence, but yes, at a narrow level, uh, we are definitely being beaten. Mm. Well, uh, do you agree with that, uh, Dr. McDuffie? In a narrow level, we are in oh. a way being beaten. Yeah, to, to some extent, first of all, the, the volume is pretty low in my ear. I can barely hear the conversation, but uh, in general, uh, artificial intelligence uh, it really is making advances in terms of what do we mean by intelligence. Uh, there's a number of different aspects when you talk about human intelligence that computers are a long way away from uh, really duplicating, but other aspects uh, some of um, you know more value from a technical standpoint. Uh, we're really making great progress with the advent of uh, GPUs, graphical processing units, um, deep deep learning in uh, neural networks, and big data. All combined are really uh, making tremendous advances. Uh, for the first time in about 60 years, uh, we, we're really seeing some tremendous advances in the field. Mm. But uh, but but Mr. Seidel, when you think about that. Um, how can we compare, since both of you have been talking about uh, the logic behind it, how can we compare the 1997 game with the current one? To what extent can we understand it's the advance of AI, no matter which category it falls into, or actually they're of the same logic, Ms. Saito? Yeah, so obviously what we're seeing here is in the last 20 years, because of exponential growth and what, we, what we call as Moore's Law, uh, it has really actually surprised a lot of people that the game of Go, given that it's much more complex than chess, uh, it came a, a lot earlier than, uh, than people expected. And I actually watched the game, and what I found interesting was when people were commentating on the uh, game itself, they used the word innovative. And this is actually pretty unique to actually claim that computers in their own right were innovative or more innovative than human beings. So that shows tremendous progress, and that just really shows what exponential growth is capable of. Mm -hmm. uh, and what about you, uh, Dr. McDuffie? Do you agree with that? Uh, yes, there, ha there has been uh, tremendous uh, progress in, in the field. One of the things that AI suffers from is every time uh, uh, advancement is made, uh, people claim that, well, it must not have really been that hard a problem after all. It keeps <laughs> redefining uh, what AI really means as we have these successes. Uh, the big challenge is going to be to make that, um, to get into emotions and consciousness, the idea of whether there's such a thing as strong AI versus weak AI, mm -hmm. uh, weak AI being the ability just to do kind of uh, these narrow technical things and strong AI being able to actually uh, replicate human, human intelligence. Mm. But at the same time, we need to take a note of a goal game, whether it is different that much with a chess. Well, I play both, but very bad uh, in terms of skills, but at least understand the logic between the two. Uh, um, let me ask you about this, uh, Andy, because goal game really requires one player's skills of evaluation. Mm -hmm. It also requires one to have, in a way, a feel about your opponent mm. and try to intimidate mm -hmm. your opponent. And it's also about strategic calculation, mm -hmm. because after all, it's not about one bomb the other, but rather about how much strategic area you eventually could occupy mm -hmm. at the end of the game. So there is somewhat difference between a chess game, as we mentioned earlier 20 years ago, and a goal game. Can this really represent an advance of AI, at least when it comes to real thinking, and probably even in a way, emotion. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it does represent an advance because while both chess and Go are what are called perfect information games, mm. Go is in many orders of magnitude more complicated than chess. So I think chess on average, you have 35 different moves every move you make. Go is about 250. 
but from an emotional perspective, um, I think the other issue that's very important when a machine is playing a human is mm. that it's, a very, it's impossible for a human to maintain peak mental performance because of fatigue, because of stress, because of other distractions, mm -hmm. whereas a machine doesn't get tired, it doesn't get distracted. And because of that, I think it actually can create, uh, it has a psychological edge against human components. Mm. Psychological edge, when you say that, uh, against or over the human beings, it depends on what you really want from a game. Mr. Saito, I was thinking about that before coming into the studio. When we play a game, what is the goal of playing a game? Is it about winning the game? Ultimately, that's the only goal. Or is it about winning over yourself, in a way? Or winning over the other opponent with many of the other information, support, the emotions you've got from many people around you. What is the purpose of a game? Does it really matter when it comes to computer versus, or AI versus a human being? No, and that's a very valid point. I think that the level of AI we're talking about, also known as artificial narrow intelligence, is way still uh, immature compared to what we uh, classify as intelligence in, in humans. Mm -hmm. So emotion, uh, compassion, psychology, these things, uh, computers have a ways to go. And so ironically, what they say is the next hardest game for computers to solve is actually poker, because that involves psychology <laughs> and actually not being perfect or, 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 or tricking someone. And and so from a, from a perfect game perspective of chess or Go, a computer could be too perfect. In f poker, that can actually be a bad thing. So to be human sometimes means that you have to get things wrong and be emotional and look at the psychological aspects. And computers are still far away from accomplishing that. Uh, do you play co poker, uh, Willem? Uh, very badly. <laughs> I, you, know, you give yourself away and uh, it is actually from a human being different, but uh, from a computer it's uh, also a very, very hard problem. I have to get back to Andy because mm -hmm. I'm talking, going to next uh, handle the issue of Mahjong, you know, the mm -hmm. matcha, which is a Chinese game. Uh, it is well known even in the Joy Luck Club, uh, written by Amy Tan in uh, Chinese American culture, also well known to the Americans. So uh, it is also a lot of emotions and also coordination among different players. Sometimes they play against one another, mm -hmm. the strategy is always changing, the grouping always changing. Sometimes they are your enemy, the other time they are your, uh, your, your, your partner. What about that? Will computers work well in that regard? Well, I think first it's important to note that why, what are emotions? Emotions are really <coughs> a feedback and control mechanism where humans can uh, maximize their likelihood of success. So I'm not so sure that emotions are important in the development of AI for computers. But if we look at Mahjong, I think that um, it's what's called an imperfect information game and in that all of the information is not available during the game. Uh, and I do agree that the next uh, development for AI in terms of gaming ought to be things like Mahjong and poker, uh, uh -huh. where the ability to read people is very important, as well as to calculate odds, is which that scary? computers do well. In a way, Dr. McDuffie, that they would be able to read people, read our minds, know what we want, what we desire to do. What would that mean? Are you scared? No, I'm, I'm personally not scared at all. <laughs> I think a lot of uh, activities that we deem intelligence, some, some require emotions and empathy and some don't. And, and, and I think um, there's a, still room for a hybrid systems uh, that combine the best of uh, AI, machine learning, and human involvements. Example is uh, certainly the chess example. You mentioned back in 97, uh, uh, IBM's Deep Blue beating uh, Kasparov, the world uh, champion at mm -hmm. the time. And since then, uh, they've kind of gone away from human machine uh, tournaments and they've had these what are like mixed martial arts uh, com uh, competitions where you can be a human or you can be a computer or you can be a combination of human and computer and, and you know see who comes out the best. Latest uh, competitions show that these hybrid uh, cases where you have uh, uh, a human expert uh, combined with the uh, power of um, a deep recall of a computing system uh -huh. are, are actually the superior in, uh, in that kind of environment. The future of AI is going to be, I, I think, from um, uh, the non-emotional, non, not requiring emotion or human consciousness, but doing all the kind of uh, search activities and 
technical knowledge things that uh, don't require and are actually in a lot of cases hindered uh, by human emotions. Uh, so once those things uh, get up and running, mm -hmm. uh, tackling the issue of consciousness and human emotion is something that's always of theoretical issue interest, uh, but I, I don't see a real market for that.